G'day, Tez here. Bit of an easy afternoon today. Uh, it's actually my last day of the week. It's, even though it's Thursday, uh, I've worked uh, pretty solid for the last two, nearly three weeks. So I'm having Friday, Saturday, and probably half a Sunday off before I've got to head off again. So I've got to get ready for Sunday um, as much as I can so I don't have to come into work too early. So I've got to hook up the side chippers because I'm off to St George um, for 10 days. So I'm going to be on 10 days on, four days off roster. And uh, so I've got to get ready for that basically. So, But it's not as simple as just hooking up one trailer and going. I've got to break down the other road train um, pull a couple of dollies out, move a couple of dollies around and wash the lead trailer out and uh, get ready to go. Um, hopefully I'll get that done by this afternoon. If I don't get it done today, I'm going to come in early on Sunday and do that. Um, so here we go. <laughs> This is the uh, lead trailer I've got to put on, but unfortunately it's hooked onto the 650. And I've got to wash this out. Uh, it's been counting chicken manure. That'll be fun. It smells great. So this is my dog trailer, but it's got the wrong dolly under it. So I've got to take that dolly off and um, stash it somewhere and put the dolly I want underneath. This is the blue set of uh, side tippers we got and this is the dolly I want. Uh, normally stays with this set of side tippers uh, because it's blue, that's the only reason. But I want the uh, triaxle, not a tandem. Uh, just simple way, simple reason to get more weight. But all we've got here is a simple uh, pulling system. This how I'm hooking it up now it's not a rated um, pulling system so I can't use it on the road but it's good enough to knock trailers and dollies together uh, around the yard just quickly getting back to the dollars because I know I'm going to get asked this question and I've been asked in the past how much more can I carry with a tri dolly um, between a tandem dolly well a tri dolly I can cart with the extra axle 6 tonne but the time you take the weight off the wheels, the axle, a little bit more metal in the springs and all the airbags, depends what system you're using, it roughly works out to be, um, you can only cut four tonnes, so you almost lose two tonnes just in the extra weight. Now you can see I'm counting a can of um, CRC around, I usually give everything a good squirt, especially if I haven't used it for a little while, um, just to... Uh, just free things up, make things easier. I do have an extra set of air, oh, I suppose, connections at the back. Um, instead of using the ones at the back of the cab of the prime mover, there's quite often there's uh, something there on the right at the back of the prime mover. Now these are the hydraulic hose um, for the side tipper. <sighs> Easiest way to get rid of them is just throw them straight over the top. Hopefully you haven't got any too much dirt in the back of your uh, trailer there to get them dirty. But uh, quite often, yes, yeah, it's, it's the easiest and quickest way to push them back up there. Now you can see I'm undoing all the air hose and the um, electrical line there that for the dolly to the trailer. It is quite quick and simple to do. I have got this a little bit sped up. Anywhere you see me walking around, I've sped it up a little bit. Now you can see me uh, tugging on the uh, turntable lever uh, to un disconnect the turntable or open the jaws up on the turntable. I did go back and widen the legs down. You just couldn't see me do it, so I cut that little bit out.
backing a dolly up like this is just no different to backing a tra car trailer up uh, behind your car. The only difference is I can't see through my back window because I don't have one so I've got to use the mirrors and you can only see basically the side of the dolly so there's always a little bit of oh, I suppose correction happening all the time. I noticed in the mirror there was a drum sitting out in the paddock there so I was just trying to go down to one side of that a little bit. Now just drop the A-frame leg down to hold the A-frame up. Now you notice I can't get the pin out at this point in time. But once I take the air lines out um, and dis disconnect everything, the pin actually came out quite easily. Not a problem in the world. Sometimes you can get lucky like that. Now, if you go had a big enough screen, you would have noticed I wasn't exactly 100% all lined up there. Um, sometimes it's not as easy as it looks. So I'll just grab the jemmy bar. Um, and sometimes you can just pry enough, just get across a little bit, just uh, wriggle things around. Especially if you haven't got any weight pushing on anything really hard. And there she goes, drops in. Just saves trying to move the truck back and forth and move it across five millimeters. You can spend half a day just trying to line it up. That's the problem with this kind of system. Um, if you're using a ring feeder, it just 99% of the times it will just drop in. Uh, where this, you've got to be pretty accurate. It's a little bit harder to get things in and in and out. Um, but what we, well, what I use it for, just knocking around in the yards, uh, it's just fine. It saves uh, ring feed and you bulk everything else up at the back there. That's why nothing's rated using this system and there's no safety catches. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, pull that dog, dog trailer forward over there um, to get out of the way because it's in the way for a road train to come in and park if you need to get trailers or something. Uh, where we normally park for the single trailers, that area has been filled up. so. I'll just out of the way, while I'm here, got plenty of time, might as well do it. Um. So when I went and made a plan for what I'm going to do here, after I told you what I was going to do, I uh, figured out it was just going to be quicker and easier if I just back up a few metres, um, probably where the wash area is for us, and swing it in and back it in properly. Uh, where I said I was going to pull it forward, well, there wasn't really enough room to swing the prime mover around um, to guide anything so this was the easiest and um, the safest way to do it. Now this is a little bit harder but not really, not if you're used to um, backing vehicles. Um, I just got to, when I'm backing something like this, you know, even a road train, um, the best thing I've ever been told is to uh, Lead your, tra uh, lead, lead your dolly, so guide your dolly where, where you wanted to go um, so and that will guide your last trailer now there's several techniques you can use when you're back on a road train or something like that uh, it all comes down to practice I think yeah um, learning how to position your dolly even with uh, doing it with a lead trailer that's probably the most important things and don't get to a stage where you're doing huge overcorrections if you start to go off a little bit 
it if even you know people are kind of watching it it's less embarrassing if you're doing keep a little short pull forwards and straighten up then going way out of control making a big mess of it then yeah really embarrassing yourself so if you know your doll is going out of whack just pull forward a little bit and just correct it doing that way and a longer pull dolly is easier than a shorter pull dolly to, uh, to back and having shorter trailers are as easy than the, yeah, the 45 foot uh, trailers because and if you're using the same truck and trailers all the time it's easier to learn off of them where I'm jumping around to different lengths of trailers, different length of dollies uh, the same truck most of the time um, so if you stay with the same system it's easy to learn and just keep practicing in the yards or in parking bays and stuff like that just to hone your skills it's probably one of the important uh, techniques you can learn and you can save yourself a lot of time The turntable levers are actually on the opposite side on the turntable. Yeah, it's actually the same side as uh, my prime mover. Now there's two levers on these um, turntables. There's uh, one at the very front and one at the back. One's a safety latch so if one fails the other one's meant to catch it. It's a good system but yeah, it just catches you if you're um, used to pulling turntables from the one side. So, so once again I'm starting to unhook uh, all the uh, airlines, turning taps off. Um, yeah, just basically going through the system of um, unplugging everything because this is the dolly I want to put onto the other one. So, dollies always have the leads for both ways uh, to hook onto your lead trailer to hook onto your um, back trailer. At the back of the trailer, there is no ever any leads it's just straight connections you can see me um, taking tape off the around the electrical uh, fitting we quite often uh, tape them up it stops them vibrating around and coming loose and your lights stop working so it's an easy thing to do um, and it just takes one less worry out especially if you come out on the highway and suddenly your lights stop working at night uh, it becomes quite dangerous so it stops that problem. What I've got there is a piece of cardboard with a heap of grease on it. Uh, yeah, grease on the turntables. I quite often just grease the uh, kind of the bottom part of the turntable, put a heap of grease and spread it around a little bit. Um, and not so much up the top because when you put a trailer on, um, everything gets pushed to the top or to the front of the turntable, I suppose you could pull it. Put a little bit in the jaws, keep them uh, lube up because that's where the most of the wear points are. We don't run greaseless turntables, even though we got two turn turntables are uh, greaseless. Um, if you're going to run greaseless turntables, you can't have a grease turntable at all in the system. Uh, if you've got a greaseless turntable, you still need to use a powder of some type, a carbon powder, or um, baby powder. Um, don't know where you get baby powder from. I hate to think you got to crush up little babies to get baby powder or something. You ever thought about that? Just what you think about when you're driving trucks. Where does baby powder come from? But seriously, just talcum powder or something like that. But you can't have grease on it, otherwise it just makes a mess. Anytime we're bobtailing a dolly, um, even behind a trailer or a system like this, we don't turn our uh, valve on for the uh, brakes to lock the brakes on um, when you put your pressure foot pedal for the brakes because the brakes on the uh, dolly will lock up and some people have flip trailers and done some really weird stuff and apparently it's not that hard to do so if you ever see a dolly bobtailing or you're going to tow 
uh, dolly bob tailing just turn that um, brake line off so your brakes won't be working now I'm just walking down check the height I would lift the legs up just a little bit about an inch off the ground so they don't uh, move sideways or get bent I'm trying to move sideways a little bit then I jump back in the truck and push the dolly all the way underneath till she locks on Right, go lift up the leg, uh, take the air hoses off again. I actually hook the uh, air lines up to the trailer, so when I um, ready to go next time, all I have to do is just hook up the uh, lead trailer to the uh, dolly. There was just a little bit of electrical tape I wanted to cut off the uh, electrical fitting there, just the leftovers. So that's what I'm doing there. See, there's uh, that's where the taps are for from the dolly to the dog trailer. Now I'm unhooking the uh, do uh, dolly from the primer hooker. You'd see, um, yeah, that pin's not going to come up too easily just by itself. So I basically, uh, yeah, got a um, crowbar and just and a hammer just to use as a bit of a wedge. Give it a couple of hits with a hammer just to show who's boss. But eventually, just had to go back and um, yeah, just build up my little lever point, and yeah, it pops out as easy as that. See, um, I give everything a good squirt down with CRC uh, just to clean everything out, uh, makes everything work properly. Um, you definitely don't want any dirt or grit over your hydraulics because they say that's what the filters are for, but no use testing the filters out. I tend to hook up the hydraulic hoses first, um, about the heaviest things. Um, once you've got them set up where you want them, you can set everything else up around them. Uh, I didn't realise there was so much bit of dirt in the pocket of the corner there when I got the hoses over and hooking it. So I've got to give the uh, connection a good, good clean out. I would have done this anyway, um, just in case. Give a good wipe out with the rag, make sure there's nothing down the bottom of it. So this is the return line. Now you, you saw me quickly pull that uh, coupling back. Now she slid forward. Now that second little O-ring locks into place. So you push that forward and turn it a little bit and she um, keeps the fitting into place. So the hydraulic fitting won't come undone. Same thing on the male side of this. You can see it just slid back, uh, click back in by itself, and I did the uh, safety latch on it afterwards. Now you uh, got your airlines and your electrical cable. Now that's where I do next. 
that's your brake line there and this is your su supply and every time you push them in give them a quarter of a turn to lock them in and now your electrical cable bring your lights push it in I'll tape everything up later on Because side tippers work on the hydraulic um, cycling system, so hydraulic pressure only runs one way, uh, the second line is just a uh, return line. These little air lines here, which I've got two sets of, um, I've just had to work out which is which and which colour code goes where, uh, turns a valve in the trailer, so even though the hydraulic pressure or flow goes the one way, there's a valve which gets triggered by these little air lines right. to which way they go to tilt the trail. I think that makes sense. If it doesn't, I'll uh, try to explain it at a different time again. Just let me know. Or if there's an easy way to explain it, let me know and I'll try, try again. You can see me doing a rolling test here. I'll do a better example for, of this later. I have uh, vi uh, video but I haven't edited it properly yet uh, basically just roll your truck forward a little bit put your foot on the clutch if your truck keeps rolling it means the brakes are all released so. Quite often got to wash their trailers out, depends what jobs they're going to. Um, some people get really upset if you've got foreign matter in their uh, product if you're tipping out. So it's always a good idea to wash them out. It's just uh, quick and easy if you do it straight after the job, but apparently they didn't have time the other day. So I got Lambert to wash this. So I basically turn the tap on from the bore, um, which runs to the little firefighter pump. This little pump um, it's had a very hard life. It's been never seen a day in its life in the shed. Uh, always kept outside. Unfortunately, it's been run over twice, so that's why things are not looking too good there. Um, I don't think I can help with safety likes that way we do it. You can see I switched it on, turned the choke on in one, one go. She started up like a dream, like, like a little champion it is. We do cut a lot of, I uh, oh, like they say in the industry, cow and uh, chicken fertilizer. Uh, yeah, it it is a um, job we quite often do uh, for the local farmers. It's um, apparently it's cheaper than well, it is cheaper than buying um, fertilizer, um, urea or something like that. But it's got its own costs as well. And unfortunately it can be very corrosive as well so we quite often wash our trailers out as much as we can after we use them um, as soon as we can and you can see something along i suppose that we say the bottom of the door now um, that's actually hot mix um, tar from bitumen it's that's not the easiest stuff to get off sometimes and it can take quite a while to get it off your trailer The day I actually uh, washed this trailer out, it was a reasonably nice day for a change and usually it's a wet, cold, miserable time when you go wash trailers out and get splashed and everything else. Uh, 
So basic principles in to washing anything else out, uh, give everything a good soaking uh, first off, uh, then start hit the bigger lumps and just keep soaking them until they keep moving. So you might wash the same uh, part three or four times just to try to get everything off. Restlessness to hell and back. What's my purpose? What do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack. And sometimes you just gotta believe there's something that'll give you relief. There's something that'll have what you need. What you need. We're broken, it's tragic. We're not all elastic, but maybe there's magic. Believe you could have. Check for the height. Check the alignment. Whoa. Need to go across that way a bit. Wind his legs up. Ah, see how Just getting up to it. Oh, feet are sore, knees are sore. Well, it's not quite in, is it? Once we get a bit of power behind it, we're fucking. Roll it back first and then roll it forwards. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I can do another good 
Так, спойлер на сегодня. А он стоил как он? Да, стал дымзе. You guys really like it in these cans. One's the brake line. Slight air leak down there somewhere. I don't know where. <sighs> now this is the wrong part. Sent these up. So they don't fucking kill everything. That's the dolly, fully aired. need to do is get this one there's the other one there's a trick there's a trick D-Liza put them on now because I've never had the camera set up properly I just kind of um, yeah, willy nearly put that on. You tend to miss a little bit, but here I, I kind of went up the front of the truck, uh, put everything into float, so PDO lever back. I switch, um, hit the air switches side to side to open and close, and to get the pressure off the uh, lines, basically. That's what I was after, so I can put the um, pressure off for the uh, hydraulic lines. There we go, see? Come on. 
Everyone's clean. Everyone's clean. Click them, push the locking nut in. There we go. So the basic problem we got here is, <laughs> yeah, we don't run the same dolly under the same trailers all the time. So every dolly's got its own different length pull, um, where it sits and everything else. So we basically had to set everything up for the longer pull dollies. Um, so if anything a little bit shorter, we kind of have a little bit too much excess. So it kind of does get a little bit messy, but providing everything doesn't get tangled up and uh, or drag on the ground or anything like that we can keep it pretty neat when we need to it's not too bad it's all right for those people who run the same trailers with the same dollies all time all year round where we don't do that we change dollies to trailers depending what jobs we've got going on and what other jobs we've got going on um, the high priority better paying jobs quite often get the better dollies than and the lower paying jobs. Probably tape up all the uh, electrical fittings. Easy. Stop the hassles. All right. Well, huh? Rock her back and forth a bit. See what she does. Just like on a turntable when you're hooking it up, still got to do the same thing with a ring feeder. Just roll everything back and forth. Um, just make sure everything's locked in and um, in place and it's good time to do it for your turntable as well so you're doing all everything at once better off doing it here um, dropping it in the yard than out on the road Yep, that's it. You see that? The bulgy parts all the way down. Leave as far back as you can go. The bulgy part all the way down. Change these out. I did open and shut the doors. Oh, you didn't see me do it. Uh, it wasn't a very good camera view, so I took it out. But the switch was around the wrong way, so I just turned the Turn the air hoses around and that, that solved that problem. So that's flexible as it is. So. And we shouldn't do, be doing 90 degree turns anyway, so. Hairpin turns. I don't know if I'm going to do a part two to this because all the jobs weren't done. Uh, if I do, I'll put it out. If you make it this far through the video, thanks for watching. Please uh, be safe out on the road out there. Be kind to each other. Keep the shiny side up. And I will catch you on the flip side. Bye.